now presenting Caleb Sidaris. The intellectual of the Sidaris family is among us today. He's going to be talking about big data. Ha <laughs> I'm looking at you and you're looking at me and we're looking at each other and we're one big family. You know, it's something that is really on people's minds, right? The whole issue of big data is making headline news. There's a big drum roll in the media about big data, how it's being abused, how it's being amassed among populations of people, how masses of data are being gathered about you and about us. And I think it's a big concern in terms of what people are, who's gathering this? I want to talk to our sort of IT expert here. Well, don't, go, don't go that far, but you know. Okay. In, in, How would you call yourself? Uh, enthusiast. Enthusiast. Well, he's a CS student, right? Yeah. So he's studying CS and here he is. Who's collecting all this data on us? What are they collecting? I've got three questions for you. And what are they doing with it? Okay, so before I can explain that, I need to explain a term called IoT. IoT stands for the Internet of Things. So it's pretty much... Mm -hmm. Any device that is connected Internet to the... Internet of things. Yeah. Connected Internet to the, of things. Yeah. It sounds very sort of conceptual, shall I say. <laughs> Sorry, carry on, carry on. Yeah, so it's, it's any device that's connected to an internet and has data transmission. So that could range from your phone, your tablet, your computer. And any data that is being transferred to the internet can be counted as big data because it's stored, it's processed, and it's used by these companies. So it could be ranging what from... What companies? Any, any company that produces an IoT device. So Google, Facebook... So Google, Schmoogle... Apple. Yeah, I mean, all of these big... The big five all do it. Amazon, Apple, all Schnapple, of them. Apple, yeah. and the list goes on. Okay. Yeah, yeah it is a growing concern. <clears throat> There's almost no laws preventing or prohibiting companies from ex using the data, you know, t for their gain and our detriment. So, How are they collecting all this data on us? So basically, anyone plugged into the internet, yes. Any search they make, sure. Any keyword they type, but basically any alphanumeric they type on the keyboard, it all gets stored. Yeah. So currently, the three main devices Americans use: eighty-one percent of American adults use smartphones, fifty percent, fifty-one to fifty-four percent use computers, and thirty percent use tablets. So these are the three three main devices that we're using so websites they visit images yes. they see messages they send and receive emails so it all gets captured yeah in the store in the extreme use of big data companies like google they can make profiles around you so based on your searching patterns your usage statistics they can make a profile of if you're married if you're single how many kids you have if you're a long time youtube user which videos you would click on Goodness me. Um, you know, you're, you're, depending on what you allow them to see, they could see how much you purchase in a month, right? So they're making profiles for every human. And you can see this with Google Ads. When you advertise on Google Ads, there's very specific keywords you can advertise to. You can advertise to ages, age groups, ethnicities, um, job types. And how do you think you can advertise to these certain specific groups? Because because Google is Google is taking your data, filtering it out, creating profiles they have a profile for, people, for you. Yeah. yeah, and then they can advertise directly to you. So basically, there is no privacy at all when you're using the internet. None whatsoever. Um, read the terms and service. You'll be surprised how much you let these companies take from you. So if anyone out there thinks that they have privacy, <laughs> forget the idea. It doesn't exist. Yeah. They have you, they have your number, they have your address. They know everything about us, these big tech companies, right? Yeah. They gather information, they say for marketing purposes, all right, so they can create these marketing profiles for, uh, in terms of uh, selling products to us, advertisements, pop-up, you know, pop-up messages, uh, enticing us to buy uh, goods and services that match our interests, right? Match yeah. our profile. Match your profile. Um, whether that be educational services, goods on an Amazon store, uh, whether that be, um, you know, a dating sort of service. 
maybe they have profiles about the sort of women or men we like. And it's good to get that <laughs> the right way around, yeah. Speaking about dating, it's quite coincidentally, one of my good friends, he's in Toronto University right now. And there was a dating service for the university. And you didn't have to input any information. It would just match you with people. They already match yeah. you. Wow, they look at you. that. Yeah. So marriage is made not in heaven, on the internet. Yeah, and I think it was mainly for um, people, uh, students doing accounting and computer science or business, one of those three. So they would just match you up with someone within your preferences. So if you've been mismatched, who are you going to blame? Google, Microsoft, <laughs> Apple, you know. I mean, you, you Probably can... Apple, right? Because, you know, that was the first marriage that went bad, isn't it? You I know, mean, one you, bite you... of the apple. Yeah, and that, that's true. That was a human race over with. You know, we inherited sin nature from that uh, <clears throat> original <clears throat> sin. But um, let me ask you a question, right? So that's, that's the context, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but it's not just used, all this data is not just used for marketing. Where else, what other channels is it being fed to? You know, what other dark places is it going to? First of all, you have access to that data right. through a YouTube homepage, for example. There's recommended videos for you based on your profile, based on what you like to watch, the keywords that Google have analyzed. Also on your Instagram homepage, it's no longer sorted by um, date of release, it's sorted by your preference. Right. So the, the videos, the images that Instagram think that you prefer, they'll put it at the top based on the data that they've, they've collected off you. So it does benefit you to an extent, more personalized videos to you, more personalized advertisements, things that you necessarily would prefer. Example, I would prefer an advertisement of, let's say, a video game compared to a beauty product. And Google knows that. So they always advertise video games and technology to me. But ultimately, this data is available to the highest bidder. Whatever, whatever advertising agency wants to access this data, they can just pay, they can get it from, from these okay. companies. One could argue, well, all right, it's just a group of companies around the world who buy that data to push goods and services to help us make a greater informed choice. So that's not so insidious. I mean, that, but how can that, how is it being abused? That's really where I'm driving it. How, is it being abused right now? Not speculatively, how is, how is that happening, Caleb? Um, there's lots of reports, unconfirmed reports of how it is being abused, but I could give you hypothetically how it most likely is being abused now and can be abused. I'll give you a few scenarios. So healthcare, for example, um, you, you, can Google search, you can Google questions about your healthcare. Obviously, most users use Google Chrome, uh, Google Chrome has access to the websites you use. This data can be gathered. And information on your health, on your health insurance, what conditions you have, is classified under that big data scope. So this, so, so, your, so your healthcare theoretically could be sold to insurance companies. And these insurance companies could potentially choose whether to, to you know, insure you, to insure you at a higher price. You know, and so they evaluate your yes, risk yeah. as a healthcare customer and that profile that they develop and the risk they assess from that profile determines whether your premiums go up or down. Yeah, and I, I don't believe this is happening now, but with the, the amount of data that these companies have of you, they could even create like a score, a human score, right. based on your behaviors, uh, how much you use the internet, the types of searches you make, and they theoretically could rank you based on your performance, on your actions, and, and more, or more of the above. So the implications, especially as IoT is growing, the Internet of Things devices are growing. In 2015, there was 4.7 billion devices used, and those were mainly phones, computers, and tablets. And by 2025, there's supposed to be 20.1 billion IoT devices. Well, that's going to be more than the population of the world because people have more than one device. Right? Yeah, and this is just in the US, right? So, oh, those figures you just quoted just are just in the US. Yeah, just in the US. A population of less than 400 million. Yeah, exactly. And there's over 4 billion 
yeah, devices think, think, think about in this room being used. Let, let's count the IoT devices in this room. You have a phone. There's three people in this room, right? You have a phone. I have a phone. Alex has a phone. There's a computer right there. There's three more computers right there. Alex has another and laptop. Ten times more the population. Yeah, so already in this room we have maybe four, three times more devices than the humans. Yeah, but this is a studio though, isn't it? Ex exactly, but even in your own, in your own home. And it's th the thing that we should be worried about is not just the devices what type of devices. So if we right. think of a smart home scenario, you have your phone, you have your smart thermostat, you have your uh, s smart refrigerator, you have smart everything, right? Smart cameras. And all these devices are under the scope of big data. So data about your behaviors, about your sleeping schedules now, about your food products can all be sent, analyzed, and, and put in the profile around you.